hi there, ho there, everybody. Guess what? It is Saturday, and it is time for the dork table, and you got Grammy Mary here, along with Flash Rooney Head, or Flash Dork, as he is on the RLM chat, and we're going to lead you on a merry little um, jaunt down Dorkland Trail. <laughs> hey, yeah. How's that sound? I'll get, my, I'll get my wife to start a book about it. Oh, hey, there you go. Okay, say something else so I can make sure I got my levels good. Where are we at, too? We're at RLM and the dark table and all Yeah, this. okay. Let me... We've landed? We've landed. We're live. We're going. We're, yeah, oh. I'm I'm playing with... I'm adjusting the volume. <laughs> I'm making sure this lighter works. <laughs> Oh, we're in trouble now. We're in rubble, Rorge. That, the things that matter most in life have nothing to do with you. Uh, you know, sometimes that is true. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Mary, I just like to say shit. To I know you happens. do. I know you do. And I usually so, laugh at the shit that you say just because I ain't got anything better to do. And I actually kind of sort of enjoy laughing. So. You know me too well. I do it well. I am a trained professional at it, don't you know? <laughs> Too bad I don't get paid for it. <laughs> oh, no. See, that that would make you a slave to it. Oh, thing. well, you know, if there's something to be a slave to, having a good time would, damn it, twist my arm. I'll do it. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Okay, over here on Fakey Book, I do see, or Fascist Book, or whatever the hell you want to call it. I see Bubs is over here, um, and I also see New. Hey there, New. How you doing? Actually, his name's George, but he goes by <laughs> New. Um, let's see. And on the effing site, I know Grimmy's over here because he posted the link for it so I could copy it and throw it over there in the... Um, corner pocket over on crush and run hey there i know it was is jimmy buffett one that's cool i like cheeseburgers and i i was singing that actually to um <laughs> yes, was. to flash a rooney dork and he said oh. what did i ever do to you <laughs> <laughs> oh wow <laughs> i did it too yep. um, i just didn't think you'd tell anybody i thought that was private <laughs> oh, good God, no. Man, Seriously? we did it on the internet. Now everybody knows. I know. Now everybody knows that you gave me it, shit. <laughs> it, no, it's true. If, if, it, if it happened on the internet, it's true. That's right. It is true. Okay. Yeah. Um, I see Sock Puppet is over here on that crush and run in the corner pocket. And let's see. PJ's over here, but I don't know if he's playing along. <gasps> Ow. And my kitty okay. cat just got on my lap and used mm. claws. Oh, that's not fun. Thank, no, but thank God there's denim. Uh, yeah, but I'm not wearing denim. I'm I'm wearing flannel. Oh. <laughs> my I know. favorite. Again. Okay. Me and all the lesbians just love it when you wear flannel. I don't know what it is. <laughs> It's probably some kind of fetish. It'll be a fucking uh, flannel gate by the end of the month. Ooh, hey, that's a cool name for it. Flannel right. gate. <laughs> okay. I just get my good friend Vincenzo to market it. Oh, hey, yeah, because Vinny is very good at, at uh, marketing all kinds of stuff, including Spreading himself. Shit. Vinny, you're so, you're so Vinny. Dork Spread Vin. Them. Yeah. Dork oh, Vin's you're going to give me some extra chuckles, Dork Vin? Thank you ever so cool. much, hon. I will save oh, those for later. <laughs> or maybe so, I'll use them right now. Huh? Do you want to say hi to all the nice folks at the Sh RLM? Do you suppose I oughta? I suppose uh, I oughta. It, it, it's true. I like the way that Grim and Moose do it at the end, but your, your way is a uh, cool tool. Ah, oh. <laughs> You know, not to pick well, sides or anything. But you're picking sides. Okay. Yeah. Moving let, along. Let let the dice fall where they will. Uh, seven come eleven. How come eleven gets... Uh, never mind. Move along. Hey there, Asmo. I see you right up top again, darling. Yeah, you just <laughs> like that missionary position, don't you? 
Oh, well, that's okay. You know, if you find something that works for you, stick with it, darling. That's that's all I got to say. Um, that's right. <laughs> I also see Barman is here, as well as so lovely Beth Z. Grim Nerd has chimed in, as well as Grimner. Hey, got a double dose in there. <laughs> Damn. You know, I think the Cosmos just might have a little bit of trouble dealing with that shit. I also see the lovely Kate <laughs> is here, as well as Beto! <laughs> Chalcedony is here as well and Lurky 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 her, her. <laughs> Circolo is here although I, I do I believe just, she's downstairs I no I think I left her on because she's in the kitchen with the family oh sweet okay well that's so okay she's running but yeah they're, they're doing something else she's doing fam damly stuff right mm, yeah yeah that too I know how that goes um, okay, Double Dippin' a Chloe is here, as well as Dork Vini. Dork Vini, is that anything related to Dork Veneur? <laughs> I'm just curious. It's the crazy places my mind goes, you know. It's kind of like the whole Robin Williams thing. Step inside my mind, if you dare. No, it's the stuff that comes out of your pie hole when you're talking. It's not what you <laughs> think that matters. You can think anything. It's the shit you say. <laughs> <laughs> that, that. Oh, and speaking of which, yes. Uh, yesterday on on RLM, I made a comment. I'm uh -huh. gonna back this up. I've said this to you in private. I've said it about you in public. Voters are sheeples. They do not fix fucking anything. They are the problem. We need to, and more than half of the population knows it. So we're getting we're getting somewhere. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, that public I, service oh, announcement and, was brought to you by. It was brought up. No, it was brought up that you vote. No, you vote local. That's not what I was talking about. I was talking about these idiots that think there's a federal government that needs their participation. It's a scam. Well, it does need their belief and participation in that aspect. Yeah, but, but, okay, exactly. But if you don't believe it and don't participate, then it's not there. It's just words on a screen you're reading in some comfortable setting. Thank you. And yet the other day I saw a, a little quote... Or maybe I heard it in one of the videos I was listening. I don't know. My my week has been a blur. Um, <laughs> but it said, don't believe everything you think. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah. No kidding. And that made me kind of go, uh -huh. But in any mm. case, back to saying, hey, there, yeah, hi, there, got, ho, yeah, there to everybody. Was, yeah. Search wasn't here. Okay, Chloe. There you go. Okay. Yeah. I me. did the double dip into Chloe and the dork Vinny, which is... Uh, somewhat related to Dork Veneur, but we haven't figured out just exactly how that works. Is that one of those family trees that's only got one fork? I'm not sure. I also Ow. see... <laughs> no, actually, who was it? Someone in the chat the other day said something about um, the fam everybody in the South is related. And I said, yeah, that family tree is a briar patch, which, oh, good Lord, there's a bunch of thorny buggers in there. In any case, uh, Flash Dork is here with me, and oh my god, it's so sad <laughs> that he flannel. has to put up with me. Um, flannel. Yeah, me and my flannel. Um, I'm going to be working outside today, though, because the wind's not blowing, and it's absolutely gorgeous, and I think, I think while it's nice out, I will do some raking in the yard. And then tomorrow, cool. tomorrow I'll clean out my garage and get my old Dodge out and take it for a spin and all that fun shit. But, yeah. There you Absolutely. go. Absolutely. Yay! Okay, I be Don C. Work <laughs> is logged in right now, and he's back. He's back. Booyah. I saw he was in the chat last night during the Freakers Ball, which I had a grand time playing last night. I actually stayed up later than I normally do. Go figure. Huh? But uh, I still party poopered out. Um, I also see Java, 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 Java Doctor 2, who truly enjoyed the uh, Black Friday Fails video that I shared, which I enjoyed quite a bit of that as well. It's like, oh my lord, I'm so glad I do not participate in that madness. I know, Rascal, are you going to help? Yeah, I know. My key cat's giving me hugs. Um, Meisterbrar is here. Hey there, Woody. How you doing, darling? I also see Rob Works, but I do not see a bubbler yet. What the hey? 
What's going on? I also see Colfax 101, which is, okay, I think you already know. It's Prostitution Alley, which I think that should be in the next Harry Potter, now that they're all grown up, don't you? We need to have, I mean, they have, what's that, um, what is that alley in the, um, Damn it. I can't think. I'll mumble, think of, mumble, alley, mumble, Yeah, there mumble. is an alley that you go into, and you can you can go and check all that fun shit out. But I totally and completely oh. am spazzing it. Rascal, honey, you're getting tangled in I my know. leash. Oh. Young lady, settle down. Find you're a comfortable a spot, and there. Ouch. Thank you. Yeah. Ow. Okay, moving yeah. along. I'm here, Graham Dork. As well as Jay Dread. Hey there, Hansel. How Hans. you doing? <laughs> I still I that. prefer oh, thank you, Rob Works, for firing up that bubbler. Um, bubbles. Bubble, bubble, toil and trouble. Or tiny bubbles. Okay. Uh <laughs> Holy Jehovah One is here, as well as Juana Taco. And you know what? I didn't have tacos last night, but I did have some tamales that were left over. I had to finish those off, so it's close, but no cookie. I mm. also see Kozu is here, and to round out the crew is mmm bot. Was that too much mmm? I don't know. I don't care. And once again, I do not have on pink underwear, and as if you really wanted to know that, but I said it anyway. So there you go. Once again, proving Flash Rooney is right, that sometimes the shit that comes out of my pie hole is just one of those things where you go, what? Did she really say that? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. I get, I get the same. I know. That's why, that's one of your more, to me, that's one of your more endearing qualities, is that you don't, you don't hold back. You just say whatever you think. And sometimes people just go too far with what you thought at the moment and take it where it doesn't belong. But we understand that. Well, you know, they're taking it where they want to take it, and that's their business. Yeah, exactly. Right. And not getting sucked into the vacuum is the goal, and I'm practicing. I'm giving it my best shot. Oh, and so uh, my wife decides to get involved in the, the Project Dork that I've seemed to have started and she uh, did me an outline of a handbook. Yeah. I'm, I've been then, checking it out. Okay. Then she proceeded to um, title the, the chapters and I started to write a little bit in, in what she called let your inner Doric fly. Yes. And, and would I you thought, like me to go there? Oh, well, hell yeah, but there, where else in the world would we have to go to hear a story about let your inner dork fly but the dork table? That is true, but I do need imagine- to read the little header at the top first. Oh, absolutely, yeah. It, it's just the print she chose to, she's experimenting with it. It's hard to read, so you're going to glitch a little. Yeah, it's, just, it is it is a little on the busy side, but that's okay. Because my brain is a little on the fuzzy, busy side most days anyway, because it's got so much going on in there, and sometimes it's very hard to pick just one to let fall out. Well, yeah, we'll come up with a final, you know, a final font for that stuff. But yeah, if you want to give that a whirl, I had a lot of fun writing it. Well, I'm I'm sure you did. I had fun reading and it the first time. There was there was more after that. That was just one. Well. Yeah. Go, go ahead, and I'll, I'll sit here and mute and, and do this. Oh, okay. Well, the Dork Handbook, um, which was created so far, or at least started, by Flash Rooney Dork and Circolo Dork, uh, is uh, you <coughs> never knew you needed it, or you <coughs> didn't ever think about there being one, or you were waiting your heart out, when will it be here? Or maybe something else, which is, I think, very concrete in its ambiguousness. <laughs> if that makes any sense whatsoever. If it doesn't, hey, then there you yeah. go. The inner <laughs> and, dork and just I, flew out. I like the I like the commentary. For, see, as a fellow dork, I like the commentary and input that you have to offer. Ah. Thank you. 
Okay, so chapter one, let your inner dork fly. Now I got to tell you guys that the order that these things are in is not because it starts with chapter three, then chapter one, then chapter two. And that may be rearranged. You never know because us dorks, we like to be dorky. So let your inner dork fly. <clears throat> it is a well-known fact throughout the world and a few other places. If God had intended us to fly, we would have wings. Well, some folks live and die by that logic. I choose to believe they are very wrong and I need and in need of Hal Anthony to whoop out or whip out a can of whoop ass and show them to the woodshed. Well, when Hal is done, Meisterbrower can take them to the alley for a re-education program used by governments all over the world. And Grams has the oils for the upcoming healing that will be needed. <laughs> I'll send them positive energy too. It's okay, honey bun. You know, you opened your mouth and the whole cause and effect kind of thing. This <laughs> is it. You said something and this is the effect. Whoop ass time. Okay. <laughs> the world at large are a bunch of pussies that hide behind other pussies with great weapons and shiny badges. I like them shiny badges. They're F you got got to go <sighs> and then polish them a little bit. The monetary system is a fraud. Education is creating a weak master race that will cry. Um when the weather changes and the Cubs won the World Series. God, See, the world is coming to an end, which is why I have my trusty Etch-A-Sketch. So I can shake it up and start over. Because I can do that. <laughs> Living in the illusion is a choice to be made. Believing in the illusion will get you a great job, a beautiful partner, and keep you in that coveted lime green simulated Indian jewelry that is selling like heroin right now. And now I'm really jonesing for some because I really didn't know I wanted some until I just read that. And now I really, damn, and it's no longer Black Friday. I'm so screwed. I'll have to pay full price. Shit. If you choose to recognize this mess for the clusterfuck, it truly is F-bomb, 19 minutes in, then you may have people call you names like dork. So what exactly is a dork? Who is in charge of deciding what defines a dork? Well, I think each dork decides or defines its measure of dorkiness. I know sometimes I'm more dorkular than others. Absolutely. So, yeah. So allow me to offer an opinion on these questions. Dorks are people that know something, if not everything, about modern day society is very wrong, but isn't delusional standing around waiting for a change to fix it. Because right now... I'm going to have to wait a long time so I don't have no pants or no pockets in my pants. I'm wearing stretchy pants. Don't you know? That's why the, yeah, kitty cat claws go through. And there's no pockets for my change. Ouch. So damn it all. If you've wow. been called a dork or done something and said, what a dork, you <laughs> may have a seat at the invisible dork table that we gather at. Dorks don't fall into one group. They're often welcome at groups that they don't want to join. Lots of times, I get put into groups over on Fakiebook, and it's like, really, seriously, do I want to belong to a group that wants to have me as a member of their group? Some bitch, there's something wrong here. <sighs> oh, well. While all that shit's going on, I'm going to watch Twilight Zone. And I... Does that mean you're just going to sit back and eat some popcorn and go, shit, this show's pretty entertaining, just watching people go by? Some people choose other people to create big social problems that can only be solved by experts, which really is kind of sort of a drip under pressure. And this we call government. 
Some people like to wait in long lines and have their nuts or sometimes their boobs grabbed by strangers in nice uniforms, which, you know, if that's the only way you're going to have, you know, <laughs> have someone cop a feel, well, I may have to buy a plane ticket. <laughs> Yeah, they call this society. Now I'm going to go play a game, which basically <laughs> is what society is. It's just one great big game, and someone keeps changing the freaking rules on us. Damn it all. I think I'm going to change some rules as well. Um, I'll be changing some text the way you're going. <laughs> oh, yeah? Okay, Sock Puppet oh. wants to know how much and what is aren't the same thing. Dork and dorkiness. Well, uh, define dork. Um, I think there's a picture of me right beside that word in the dictionary. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, <laughs> but I then really again, doubt. you know, if you look in your dictionary, you might see a picture of you. I don't know. That's one of those. Is that um, the oh Mandela effect? There you go. Everybody oh, opens up their dictionary that. and they look up the word dork and there's a picture of themselves there. Because wow. really, I think a dork is pretty much a self-defined thing. Yeah. You know, I I would. I, would... I consider but myself it... a dork most times just because, you know, I'll do something boneheaded or maybe, you know, on purpose or by accident. And I'll go, damn, that was pretty dorky. And then laugh at it. Some people don't have the ability to laugh at it, but... I find myself quite amusing when I do something stupid. So, <laughs> you know, unless I hurt well, myself, and even then I'll probably laugh about it and go, God, what a totally so, dumbass dork. Did you get through what I wrote in that? Yeah, or, yeah did. Okay. All right, because I wanted to, um, Rob Work said rules, there are fucking rules. Okay, I understand that. I mean, it's not like I want to run around the streets with a knife slashing at people you know I'm just like everybody else what the problem I see is the media and the movies have made all these monsters and it's so exaggerated and it's so common that your little mind really sees all this shit in your reality when it's really not there you just can been convinced like a magic trick you've been conned into it that one or two out of a million or whatever that really is that fucking sick, you'd notice them. They'd stand up like a sore thumb and they make movies trying to tell you they'd be uh, doctors and freaking lawyers and shit. No, those, no. It's not quite the same thing. Ah, okay. Sock Puppet just pulled up a little definition of dork. And I like <gasps> this. I think this I resembles me. Someone yeah, who has... Okay, it's someone who has odd interests <laughs> and is often silly at times. See? <laughs> the picture of me right beside the word. Oh. <laughs> A dork is also someone who can be themselves and not care what anyone thinks. Okay, yeah. There it definitely. There you go. Definitely. Yeah. Cuz there's a price to pay for being yourself. You know, and and I really can't say that I don't care what other mm. people think. Mm. I do care, but not so much as to change myself in order to right. fit into their little cookie cutter mold. Because I've yeah, actually you grown. You know, I've grown. looking at you, though. You know, what kind of person are you? Are you talking about that seeing you? Is it a banker? Is it a garbage man? I mean, are they a peer in some way? Well, do we treat each other differently according to how well we know who we're dealing with? Well, that's true. That's true. You know, and it does kind of sort of depend on the labels that each person places on themselves as to how you interact with them. Um, I tend to just be me. <laughs> Your way works for you. Well, yeah, it does. And, you know, Good. there are some people that find me somewhat obnoxious. Hot, shocking. Yeah, well, sure. So you know. What? And because you're not shy. Yeah. Well, and I've I had see. I have had people tell me that um, they think I'm rather condescending, and and which really oh. kind of surprises the hell out of me. But I can I can wow. see where they're coming from with that. You know, once they explain it to me, um, mm. you yeah. know. So well, 
I think I incorporate just about every human um, quirk, foible, and perk <laughs> that is possible. Yeah. Because, you know, I think everybody has all of those or they wouldn't be human traits. It's just that some of us let our inner dork fly on a regular basis and some of <laughs> us prefer to only let it out for special occasions. To me... Every occasion is a special occasion because, hey, I'm still up and breathing and able to move around, so I feel special. Oh, okay. Let me inter interrupt you for Rob Works. You know, and uh, yeah, Rob Works. When I was growing up as a child, I remember looking up to these people and thinking, "Wow, that's what that's what I want to do." Blah 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 blah. And as I matured and found out what it really is that they really do, I'm glad that I, I didn't go that road. But, yeah, a doctor and a lawyer are supposed to be ideals that we look up to, not shit that we suffered through. What happened to the society that I grew up in? It's gone. It's well, all a memory. Yeah, but you know what? That that happens. I mean, if, if things... Hmm. You don't want life to be stagnant. Mm. You know, oh, I don't know. Maybe and, I do. You know, well, <clears throat> that would be like everybody being dressed in gray. And, yeah, I know there's 50 shades of gray. But seriously, you know what? If that guy was not in the book, if that guy was not this wealthy person, if he was someone that lived in a trailer park... He'd have been thrown in jail for the shit that, and I never read the book. I've had people tell me about the book, and it's like, uh, no, no, not interested in reading that at all. Right. But. But anyway, I wasn't trying to fight with Rob. I was just saying, you know, the way that I'm, I'm. If I, he was commenting on something I said because I've been smoking. Now I forget what I'm talking about. But <laughs> I can still read. And that line caught my attention when I saw it. I went, oh, I want to address that. Hey, Mary, stop talking. I want to get on. <laughs> what? Me? Stop hey, talking? That, that's what I do. I, I know. You say, hey, hey, it's my turn. And then we go all dorky and don't say anything. Yeah. But you know what? What? You know, it's really good. What the really good thing is, is that uh, we over the last, what, you said five years on the radio. I say give or take. Yeah. And I think that as a, as friends, me and you have just let the other one be what they were. And we've never had a raise your voice moment. No, we so haven't. That, that really helps. Well, yesterday I was I'm trying to finish that. What I was saying about voting is I don't vote. I think voters are the problem. I believe your addiction to authority is fucking my life up. OK, that being said. Your name comes back to me. Well, Mary's a voter. Do you say that to her? I said, fuck yeah, I say that to her. Of course. Why wouldn't, you know? And and it's just that, that, that picking and trying to create a problem that this person did that had me just upset. And I wanted to show you. I mean, I don't talk behind anybody's back. If I got something to fucking tell you, come to my house. I'll, I'll, I'll crack the beers. I'm not afraid. You know, and damn it's just life and people want to be so mean and carry a problem fuck get over it it's not important see and i wonder and, if maybe that's not a trait of being a dork is they treat everybody the same you know if i mean well, if somebody does something that i don't agree with then i tell them yeah. i don't agree with what they did yeah. um and it does to me it doesn't so make what? a shit and bit of difference if they're a lawyer or a banker or a beggar if they did yeah, something but, I don't like, I tell them. Yeah, I know. I've been I've been on the receiving end of doing something you didn't like, and you were really nice to me about it. It wasn't a big deal. What I did was wrong, but you know, it wasn't like you were harsh about nothing. You dealt with it and made sense, and went, oh, okay, boom. Yeah. Life is a decision I make, not your life, my life. Yeah. I and mean, if I want to believe that this lighter is God. Who's going to stop me from believing it beside me? So there you go. There's That's how I look at life. It's my life. You want to interfere with my life because you have a, a piece of paper or a weapon or get the fuck away from me. Yeah. That's not what I 
so I took myself out of the society that approaches me that way. And even before I left, though, it, it, it hadn't gotten to where they were picking me out of groups. I was still pretty much left alone. But I could feel the pressure of society closing checkpoints and looking for uh, illegal aliens and shit. What? I've got I've got your god walking across the screen. <laughs> I just, you know, for some stupid reason that just popped into my head while you were talking. You know, you said you you may think your lighter is god and I got to thinking, wow. Huh? So all of these concerts where people are holding their lighters up. Yeah. They're all flashing their god. How cool. Yeah. See, and that that that's yeah. just that's just spiffy. Now, to me, most days, I think a plate of spaghetti with a couple of meatballs for eyes is God. Yeah. Wow. May he touch you with your, his noodly goodness, and may you have Absolutely. an ever-so-saucy life. <laughs> right. See? And then, and then we go and complicate these great ideas by talking about them. And I've told Circle 50, 100 times in three years. Communication is the enemy of uh, success. Oh, it's I don't, not a helper. I don't know verbal, that communication verbal, is the enemy. Verbal, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let, let me finish then. Okay. Verbal communication leads to contract in anything in your life that really has any meaning or value. Okay, there you go. And it all starts with words. And we're not taught the proper way to communicate with each other. And that sets up this foundation for this life that we end up living under admiralty law <laughs> with, with a birth certificate owned by a fucking bank making money off you because you're, a dent, you're in debt. The money system, attached interest, I mean, it doesn't matter if you know it, if you don't know it. What matters is how do you get along with people that you associate with every day. And the place where I go to fight is the Internet. Wouldn't talk to people like that in public. Wouldn't even interest me. You know, if a guy said Trump won and I'm happy for him, I would be happy for him in, in the street because I don't need the fucking headache of some hothead getting pissed off over a sentence of words. Because there's no action involved in anything. It's just all, hey, you tell somebody something and they react. There's life. Yeah. Well, these pricks that write shit, it starts with communication. They write shit down, and then it's a law, and then it's a, a regulation, and then it's put this in the food, and we'll tell them it's something else. They'll never know. See, and I don't know that it's necessarily the communication that's the problem. I think it's mm -hmm. it's the actually not only believing but taking it serious. Yeah. Oh, fuck. That's so easy to do. You make an enemy out of a race of people 10,000 miles from where those people live, and you tell both sides the same story, and they both hate each other. Yeah. But hey. when, we meet, when we meet in person, it doesn't work. It only works on, on the so, uh, mass level. Individually, it doesn't, have a, it doesn't have legs. Unless you're a devout racist and you go run around calling, you know, people sand heads, like towel heads and sand niggers and whatnot, then you're going to probably run into a little opposition. Well, but, you know, I used to use the word diaper head, and then I, I realized mm. that I really need to broaden the definition of that because I know an yeah. awful lot of people that yeah. um, I consider diaper heads because they have some pretty shitty ideas and... and from my perspective, and they need to change that diaper. Well, or the ideas know, in their head. But you know that. Once again, that's my take. Because mm, you know, if you ask them, yes. they probably think it's my idea, and I think it's pretty damn spiffy. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna sit over here in the corner, and I'm gonna polish this bad boy up. You just go right ahead, and you sit over there, and you polish that bad boy up. <clears throat> I'm gonna sit over here and look at you and think yeah. you're polishing a turd. So yeah, there you, yeah. it's all yeah. It's all how you see it. You can two people look at the same pile of shit, and one of them wants to pay for it. You know? Yeah, and see, Just, that's where I think some of the problems. And I think you and I were discussing this before we went live. Um, yeah. You know, it's not necessarily you don't have to agree with someone in order to like them. 
And you don't even no. really have uh, to like someone in order to coexist with them. No, no, no. no. Uh, but know, it, it, does, it does help to be civilized about the stuff that you disagree on and just let it go. I mean, yeah. I, I know we disagree about issues, but I don't bring them up to you. Therefore, I'm not fueling the cannon. And if it comes up, I just dodge it. I don't want to talk about that. Huh. Oh, people, hey, UK people, Oliver is online. I just saw a little thing pop cool. up on my computer that he's... So, hey there, UK Oliver, if you're listening in, sweetie. Yeah. I haven't talked to him hey. in forever. I should ought to do that. Oh. Give me some more voices on the dork table. Our collection is growing. Yes, yeah. it is. Yes, it is. Especially, especially when you take a hiatus and go do Grammy dork business. I know. Well, you know, sometimes you just got to do that. Which, by the way, Christmas oh, yeah. is on better. a Saturday this year. Yeah, you better. If you didn't, I'd be disappointed. In yeah, you. I am going to be going to my youngest daughter's, and I'm taking my yeah. mother with me. So, yeah. See, grandchildren, and all that. I'm not heartless. I just don't appreciate the holidays. <laughs> but I'm not, you know, I'm not mean to people that do. I tol- you know, I tolerate, in my sense of the word. I go along. I don't really even go along with it because I'm up here doing the radio anyway. Yeah. See, and I, and I used to really put an awful lot into the holidays and really, really just kind of rick 'em, rack 'em, rock 'em, rock 'em kind of thing. Right. But. Well, my membership in the clan doesn't revolve around my uh, behaving in, like a trained seal for you know people that come over for a holiday. Yeah. You know. If I want to go upstairs and do this radio thing with you, well, then you have a nice, you know, we'll be down here when you're finished. And, wow, you know, some people can really turn a little thing like this into, oh, the family's here and you're going to ignore everybody and you're going to go do your thing. Yes, I am. <laughs> and that's that I would have answered it. Yes, no matter how she said it. You know, But it's always nice. Danes are very nice to me. I don't know why. I'm a very mean guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, maybe they know and they just go, don't feel it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's everybody's. everybody has a different way. Oh, Xmas is on a Sunday. Yeah, well, oh, okay. Yeah. So that must be Christmas There's, Eve. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm Christmas still going to be yeah. gone. Yeah, I, I figured traveling and all. Yeah, I was expecting it. So. Yeah. And, you That's know, cool. I, I told both of my girls, do not buy me anything. If you oh, really, brilliant. really, really want to do something for me for Christmas, I want you to go to an angel tree. And I want oh. you to pick a little kid's name off of that angel tree, and I want you to get them something. Take a Sweet. picture of it, put it in a card, or send me a text with that picture. I don't want, because I don't need or want more things. You know, so... Mm. As far as I'm concerned, if you want to do that and think of me <laughs> yeah. while you're purchasing something for a little kid that's not otherwise going to get, a, get anything, yeah. no. please do that. Please. And I told my grandkids that, too. well, at least the, the grandkids out in Colorado, I told them, don't buy Grammy anything. I right. don't. I don't want or need anything. If you want to make something, which they're all wonderful about drawing me a lovely picture... And so my refrigerator is losing refrigerator space every holiday. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that's the kind of stuff. Just don't don't buy me something. I, but I, you've got walls. Yes, I have walls. You should use one of those. Just make a collage of all the art they gave you. I all have actually you. the um, the Christmas present I got last year is hanging on the wall here in the living room. And it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, and see, I wanted to try authority and direction, and it didn't go anywhere. You're still not going to do what I said. Yeah, hey. that's true. You know what? I'm well, going to read to you what I got last year, just oh, because. I like I, it. I you, think it's awesome. This is okay. what my grandkids did for me. Ah, excellent. Just when I thought I was too old to fall in love again, I became a Grammy. And then my grandkids all put their little initials on it, and they painted a really fun background to it and everything and it's like uh, uh. I mean when I when I got that I have to admit I got a lump in my throat and a tear in my eye and got lots of hugs 
that you know well, that's what you're supposed to get right yeah that's what i mean life is so normal and people want to watch movies and live exciting james bond murder killer dealer drug international jewel thief crap and come on are you fucking kidding me yeah no it's a boring life people be a dork just deal with it you want some excitement set your cat's tail on fire and then try to put it out <laughs> <laughs> you know Guarantee that that'll keep you busy for hours <laughs> that reminds me of what one of the guys said yesterday at work uh they said they'd been watching MythBusters, and uh, said that MythBusters have actually proven that it is impossible to herd cats now, I have not seen that version yet, or that, that episode, okay. but... We'll look for that, yeah. Yeah, it's impossible to herd cats. And, you it's know, a good I've, story, though. I have two cats, and I cannot mm-hmm. get them to go the same direction unless I'm carrying a can of cat food. <laughs> and then they're both like, we love you, Mommy, we love you, we love you. And in the interim, they're doing the figure eight around my feet, so they're showing their love by trying to trip and kill me. But hey, <laughs> if I fall down and the can is on the floor, then it's easier for them to access it, and maybe that was their whole point. I don't yeah, know. The dog, dog will bark out 911. <laughs> no, the dogs you will know. come over and lick my face and... and I'll... The smell would get the neighbor's attention in a couple of weeks. Don't worry about it. You'll be fine. <laughs> okay. My neighbors are the closest neighbors. Right. Yeah. No kidding. I was really yeah. close that time. I'm going to have to be really, really ripe. <laughs> well, I, I hope not. I was, I was uh, just interjecting. A bad I know joke. you were. And an I've upcoming... just expanded on it. Yeah. And, you know, I... I don't not choose to participate, you know, mentally in this um, Christmas thing because of the Jew shit. I just don't really get it. What are you doing? Well, and that's one of those things that over the last few years has, I mean, I've always kind of had this mindset and I, I really have always been. And I think some of that is, is uh, part of that comes from, you know, growing up a poor Catholic child, you know, even though we didn't know we were poor, we, we knew we were Catholic, but we didn't know we were poor till someone else explained to us, hey, you're poor, and this is why. And then we still kind of scratched our heads and went, that's what defines poor? Okay, because, you know, we still have food, and we have clothes, and we have a roof over our head, so, hmm. But, um, you know, growing up not getting a whole lot of Christmas anyway... Right. And and um, I really enjoy the part of watching other people open their gifts and watching other people's faces. You know, to me, that, you know, especially if it's something that I made for them or, or yeah. really yeah. thought about, you know, because, yeah, yeah, you know, you always get these long lists, um, all that other fun stuff, but... And I look at those lists and I think, uh, I don't know. And then I will kind of sort of go shopping and I'll run across something and go, this is what they need. And when I get it for them and they open it and their eyes light up and they go, wow. And it wasn't something on the list. That's to me, that is, that's all I need. It's just that little bit right there. Just seeing their eyes light up. You're easily pleased. Uh, well, yeah, I'm not easy, but I can be tricked. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll pass that on. <laughs> I might, I might know somebody you don't. Oh, hey. <laughs> In fact, I guarantee I know people you don't know. I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. No, how, how couldn't I? We only. Uh oh, I lost you, Flash. Where'd you go? Right here. Oh. I, I got this damn, see this thing? Uh-huh. And sometimes I move and it brushes against me and hits the mute. <clears throat> oh, good job. So, I don't know. I was mumbling about some nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
well, you know, mumbling about nonsense is pretty much what we do anyway. So, you know, it's all good. Well, right. And Grimner finally, well, back a ways when I said that I believe communication. Here, let me rephrase this. So maybe I'll get, and you don't, I don't, I don't really care if you agree with me or not. I'm not looking for you to, to understand what you know. I'm trying to tell you what I think. Uh -huh. I'm probably yeah, I'm probably wrong anyway, but it's still what I think. Yeah. And Grim said maybe if we just kept it to grunts, because you know, like it's like when you walk to grocery store. Well, when I walk to the grocery store, I pass somebody I'm not familiar with. We we nod at each other on the way or say hi one or the other. Very uh -huh. rarely do you ignore the guy. You, you know, it's just not. This isn't the big city. Okay, you got quieter, dude. Did you move your mic? Oh, did I? Yeah, yep, I there you go. Must have. Much better. I was I was moving my locks out of my way, and the mic got caught in it. Ah. So, boy, that's, wow, that didn't sound how I meant it. Your long, <laughs> anyway. flowing hair. <laughs> yeah, that shit. <laughs> that shit that grows out of the top of my skull. I don't even understand. Well, yeah, there's reasons for it, too, by the way, boss. And I don't think that you have hair for a decoration. I think it's there for a, a physical need that needs to be met, and we don't know what it is truly. I mean, as far as, you know, like people will all agree, whatever you're breathing, that's air. Correct? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Whatever you're drinking, if it's wet and you can't see, you can see through it, that's probably fucking water. And we'll all agree on that. Yeah. But bring up something like, is the world flat around and you will have blood? Yeah. Why? I don't know. Oh, it's flat oh, where man. I live. I, <laughs> oh, I know. No, we've, we've touched on this a few times. You know, time yes, we two. have. And, and it's not so much the end result answer that's important, in my opinion. It's the ongoing fighting that is what's necessary to feed the beast that keeps us miserable in a way. You know, where they're, how do you put it? Unhappy. We're, we're unfulfilled. That's the word I was looking for. All of us know something's missing, but we don't all know what, we can't all agree on what it is, but we all know something is. Some people are lucky and they can fill it with faith, religion, whatever you want to call that. Other people, food. Some people, heroin. Well, some people like like the slow road and take the vodka bottle, you know, make it last 20 years, and really enjoy it. Well, I'm I'm rather partial to vodka just because I can also use it for cleaning purposes. There there you go. See, multitasking, getting fucking wasted all at the same time. Baby. Uh, I know. I know. I'm that, not quite as good as Grimmy with his turkey and wine last night, but which I found quite amusing. Ah. That's kind of sort of like making a rum cake. <laughs> I, oh. I never get the cake done because I always batter the stove. But Oh, I, I got to listen to the, the um, uh, Grim and Moose this morning when I got up. Oh, and Moosey yeah. had a hell of a good rant going on. Actually, a couple of good rants going on. It's like, you go, girlfriend, vent those uh, evil I missed, spirits. I missed the first hour. I was, uh, I'm a sleepyhead. Ah. I sleep been around here i wasn't up to the crack of 6 30 or something i think the dog would come down <laughs> yeah well yeah it's it's the country man it don't matter if it's six in the morning or six at night it has no value you know yeah all it's i know first... is when i have two paws hit the side of the bed <laughs> And then a dog yeah. going, <laughs> then I know, okay, it's time to get up because if I don't get up, one of yep. my dogs is going to mark the carpet or the couch. Oh, yeah. yeah you've been <laughs> They're telling you what to do. They're good slave masters, too, pets. Yes, they are. They are very good at it. <sighs> yes. As humans, we, we seem to pass the doctor and heinous uh, requirements and fulfill them in a fashion they approve of they've let us live all this time see you know you're doing it right when your pets let you live yeah absolutely <laughs> that, that means like you feed them and 
you know, let them go outside to do their stuff and whatnot. Yeah, it's a compromise, you know, give and take. Okay. I'll feed you, you shit outside. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I and have got to tell you this. Look, yeah, but the dog's looking up at me like, hey, Lou, how come you're not shitting outside with me? Yeah. Okay, so you got to show up. Go you on. silly human. Why are you doing that in my water bowl? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. You know, I've got to tell you little, something uh, of cosmic significance here. Cosmic. Yes. Rascal jumped up on my lap again. Oh. And you know how most people say that you're not supposed to, kitty cats don't like getting scratched on the tummy? Because, right. you know, they'll they'll do that whole, yeah, scratch my tummy, defensive. scratch my tummy, that's enough. <clears throat> well... She's kneading the bread dough while I'm scratching her tummy and just kind of, she's rubbing her head against my arm and everything. And it's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, right there, right there. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, but, but welcome I know. to sex chat at the dork table. <laughs> I'm not going to say what just went through my head. I will be, because I'm sure well, you, you know exactly. Well, you were doing all that oh. stuff. Oh God, now That's... she's chewing on my mic. <laughs> if you just if if somebody was to tune into this, you know they'd be expecting a four dollar ninety nine cent a minute bill at the end of it. The way you're talking. <laughs> wait, wait! Do you hear this? If you play this back, you'll go for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Standing yes. in as Mary's clutch at the dark table is Flash. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, okay. apparently yeah, you getting, the... Yeah, I know. <laughs> apparently the effect of watching. me scratching my cat's tummy is uh, yeah. getting my mic uh. bit. <laughs> now, let's see radio. where that goes. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> what, what did we become? Oh, my God. Uh... Remember, remember when we used to fight about politics and flat earth i don't who who did i oh man i miss sin dog i'm having a wt moment oh now it's gone okay i'm back <laughs> you know and i don't remember ever really fighting about any of that stuff oh no we would just called each other's names and we'd be there all you know back and forth it was nothing it was Holy actually God. quite fun and exercising yeah, of the gray yeah. cells yeah, but his his stand against marijuana always brings that side. Of it. Come on, you know I, what I, where I stand on pot, and if you don't, you'll find out. And if you've got a different opinion, that's wonderful. Now take your different opinion over there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a bigot. <laughs> I'm tired. Okay, wait, wait. Let me make a stand here because as for potheads around the globe, I am sick to fucking death of pompous assholes that think they have an education dictating what high is when they don't even do it. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, so I'm thinking, eh, something's not right somewhere. You know, well, who are you to tell me about something that you don't do? You know? Let's get you one of those inoculations with the mercury in it, and after you take it, then I'll take it. But you can't, you can't deal in society in that fashion anymore. They have their damn enforcement to stop you. See, and that's, that's yeah. You know, there's yeah. so many people out there that go, yeah, I believe that everyone should have the freedom to choose so long as they choose which in within these guidelines choose. that I just yeah. set out for you. That's not choice. I, okay, go ahead. I'm just fuming because you know how I feel about that. Okay. Well, you know, and just because I don't partake doesn't mean that I no. have the right to tell someone else. You know, I think the only time you really have the right to tell someone else thou shalt not is when it comes to murder. Cuz you really, you know, or you know there most I mean there are that, a few other things that but. most people that end up murdered it were it was done by somebody they know. Yeah. It's not it's not a stranger thing. It's this TV shit makes all that stuff seem so much more believable than it truly is. Yeah, that the stranger that, danger thing is, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a murder at every park waiting to pounce on, rape you and all this. Okay, maybe it happens, but not as, not as, it's not as popular a sport as the government wants you to 
they want you to believe it's bigger than it truly is. Well, and they want they, you to believe that the only person that can hear I come to save the day is yeah, them. Yeah, is them. Them who create the problem that's not even there in the first place. Yeah. Weapons of mass destruction that never were, blah, blah, blah. Proven well before we ever went there as a country, blah, blah, blah. And still, shit happened anyway because we've let the fucking asylum be run by the fucking inmates. Yeah. A bunch of in. There are a bunch of inbred fucking rich assholes that need to be stopped. And how do you stop them? You can't because they've got so many people supporting them. Yeah. Which is where it really is a mindset change as opposed to, you know, you're not going to change anything in the world until you change your mind. And minds like diapers often get filthy and need to be changed. And not just filthy in the hubba hubba no. hubba way. No, but... no, no. Yeah. You're misguided because you believe lies. And it's it's insulting to be told that in the first place. That Oh, gee, your belief system? Well, it's a, just throw that fuck aside. It's all based on bullshit anyway. Who wants to hear that? Nobody. But yeah. unfortunately, there's nothing to hear but that unless you're a little crybaby and you think that somebody else is going to come along and do all these grand things that's going to improve your life then you're delusional. Well, they're not it, going to do it just to improve your life. That's the thing that a no, lot of people don't get. You know, if they're going to be come? doing something that like that for you, there is mm. a catch. <laughs> mm. Like what? Give me an example. Because you're an experienced politician. I got you on the ringer now. Well, huh? you know, huh? Huh? we are going to provide this service for you. And this is something I just found out. Mainly because I no longer live in town, um, but um, <laughs> I'm just catching up on the chat, and it's like, oh, my Lord. Um, <clears throat> in any case, in town, they've always had, and okay, I got, because this just popped into my head, too. Years and years and years and years ago, one of the first jobs that I had in the clerical department um, was after I'd taken one stupid college outreach class, which that's the only college this old girl's got. Um, and it was computer basics. And um, I learned enough computer and enough fun stuff to where I could go and I could get a job and I worked for the city. And I was, um, let's see, I started out as the payroll clerk and associate billing clerk and municipal court clerk and then payroll got taken away from me because the city clerk was supposed to be doing that so then I became full-time billing clerk and yada 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 accounts receivable and but in any case we had someone call in and this is leading to what I'm getting to we had someone call in and she said I'm reading the back of my bill and I'm wanting to know why you're charging me for refusing something and I said excuse me so I went and got one of the little cards that we print out, and I looked on the back side of it, and I'm thinking, where in the hell is refuse on here? And she said, yeah, there's a $7.50 charge for refusing something. And I'm looking, and I'm looking, and then all of a sudden it's like, refuse, refuse, ah, okay, no, hun, the pronunciation changes, therefore the definition changes. That is a <laughs> refuse charge that's what we charge you to provide dumpsters in the alley so that you can take your trash out and we haul it away for you then she went oh my god yeah. i feel like such a dork i'm not kidding you that's what she said <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we okay. both had a good giggle about it yeah, yeah okay mistake made. Yeah. well just the other day someone was telling me that um, they were wanting to take some stuff out to the landfill but now they have to pay in order to do that. And I said, what? It always was. You know, even when I still lived in town, which was a few years ago, um, that was included in your refuse bill because they kept increasing those rates, even though, you know, they still only had one person out there doing it. And, mm -hmm. oh, sure, they replaced the loader that they have out there, but still just one person out there. And... Um, in any case, they said, yeah, you can go out there with your city bill, with your little stub that shows that you have paid your refuse bill. 
and that gets you a cut rate on when you take out like tree branches or stuff like that. And I thought, well, that's just a total load of shit. I mean, isn't that what tax dollars are supposed to go for? Isn't that what your refuse fee is supposed to go for? Is to pay for people, you know, to cover that expense so that whilst you live in the city and while you make, <laughs> while you pay that monthly fee, mm. is that not like a membership charge to be able to take your trash out to the landfill? Apparently not anymore. Apparently now they need more money. Wow. from you mm. in order to take your trash where you know if you were to just like fill up your dumpster and piss off all of your neighbors you wouldn't have to pay that extra fee but you know seeing as how you were thinking of your neighbors and being considerate and decided to haul it out to the landfill using your own vehicle and your own gas they're going to charge you an extra fee because you were considerate and didn't fill the, the dumpster for your neighbors. Wow. Talk about some bass backwards thinking there. Government, what do you want? Yeah. But what what it what gets me the most is the the worse the government gets, the tighter the grip to wait to fix it. And you know, the same people doing the same thing ever since I could remember. And Every every four or eight years, it's always the same. Oh, this guy's going to fix it. This guy. Yeah, we're still waiting for Gitmo to close. Yeah. Just for, come on. I mean, name anything. You know, Making Gitmo's going to close now because Fidel Castro died. That's Are as good sure? an excuse as any, isn't it? I mean, it makes just as much sense as any of the other ones. To who? The, the to people me. in America. Wait. Yeah, but look, <laughs> look at how many... Okay, but look at the fear side. How many Americans live in terror of the Muslim doing something to them? That supports this fight. Yeah. Hey there, Gary L. They want to be protected from evil instead of living a life. So this is what we get. We all get sucked into it somehow or another. No matter how, you know, I got it really easy compared to what, what it could have be, and you know, I just figure, why complain? I just go with it. And if it starts to rub me the wrong way, I'll get the fuck out of it. Yeah, that's called personal choice. Yeah, I, I exercise mine every morning. I open my eyes. Oh, I'm here. Okay, where's the coffee? Yeah. yeah. Oh, big and that... exciting life, Mary. Oh, Mary, I know you thought I was like an international jewel thief. You know, maybe some kind of, you know, I'm a hacker and I've got all these real special skills on the Internet. I can yes, you hack do. and get secret numbers and shit. No, I don't know. Fuck. Average Joe, boring guy. That's it. You know, you were talking Just... about your getting up and drinking coffee. I got to do this because mm -hmm. I, I put this out Thanksgiving Day before I'd, I left to go to my mom's. Um, And, you know. Everybody says, oh, we have to, today is Thanksgiving Day. It is the day that we're supposed to give thanks. And I, my mindset is, why aren't you thankful every day that you wake mm. up and all this other fun stuff? But in any case, and this applies mm. for every day of my life, what I'm getting ready mm. to read here. Mm. Today, I am thankful that I woke up. I am thankful that I was able to get out of bed under my own power. I'm thankful that I made it through the moving minefield that is my fur babies. I'm thankful for the beautiful sunrise that I was able to see when I let my doggies out. I'm thankful that I made it to the bathroom without any accidents. Now, that's that works on multiple levels because I still have cats in the house <laughs> after the dogs are out. I am thankful that my coffee pot still works. I'm thankful that my hot water heater works so I can make myself yes. presentable. Uh, I'm thankful that I get to spend the day with my mom, my uncle, my aunt, and all the other people that I run into. I'm thankful for all of the wonderful people that I interact with because they share their perspectives and help me grow. I'm thankful for all the little things in life. 
and I wish every one to have a day filled with little things, both good and bad, a day filled with memories that will last a lifetime, because that is a big thing to be thankful for. And see, that's my everyday mantra. You know, I just, even if I have something really bad happen to me, if I can, if I am still here to look back at it and acknowledge that it was a bad thing, I still survived it. I still made it through. It may have left a mark. It may have left a scar, but I still survived in order to be able to look back and say, that was a bad thing. So, you know, every day is a thankful day for me. There. Well, it's kind of wordy, but I'll give it a try tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Are you out of your fucking mind? I get to open <laughs> I get to open my eyes, coffee, that's it. I tune everybody else out. I'm done. Well, see. Till about till about 3. <laughs> And okay. that's, you know, that's your thing. And that's okay. That's your thing. You aren't hurting anybody else by doing your thing. Oh, my opinions seem to rattle the cages of the same. Yeah, but you know what? Opinions, once again, are like assholes. Everybody's got one and they all stink. Well, okay, explain it to some of these people do not realize the definition of opinion is not a fact. They're not the same thing. They're not interchangeable. You can, uh, an opinion is whatever you think. Yeah. It doesn't have nothing to do with right or wrong. It's just what you think. But if you don't get the proper coordinates out of the uh, person you're abusing at the time, you seem to get a little hot headed and start name calling and whatnot because the other guy won't see a point that doesn't exist to him. There you go. Yeah. It's all a matter of perspective. You got yours, I got mine. Everybody wants to be right, looked up to, and important. And I, the older I get, the more I am getting a grip on, fuck that. Then I'll never have any time to myself, and I'll be back where I was when I was doing things I didn't enjoy doing instead of a daily comfortable thing. I had responsibilities in life and shit like that that had to be dealt with. But I refuse to do it in your traditional fashion. And there you go. And that's mighty dorkular of you. Right. Well, people will make a big deal about education and say shit like, well, show me your research or show me your, your documents, you know, prove who you are. I have the Internet. I have a printer. I can make a document. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? You know? If you're talking to another person and, and they're doubting every word you say, it doesn't matter what you're talking about. But if you're talking to somebody that's giving you the benefit of the doubt, you're presenting yourself in an intelligent fashion, you just graduated from UCLA, they wouldn't fucking know the difference. Yeah. You know, just don't talk like a, like a, a copy of a copy. And don't ever have a thought of your own because they will not advance you if you do a thing like that. You got to know the fucking rules and abide by them. Rules, I don't like the, schmools. Yeah, I, well, yeah, it sounds good, but try getting around it. Yeah. You know, I'll give you a, here, I'll give you an example, right? I am not a fond uh, lover of identification. I despise the fact that these fucking people believe that they have the right to stop me at will and, and demand I show them documents. So what I started to do in the States back in the 90s was not get a state ID or a driver's license. Or anything. They didn't have a driver's license in probably about since about 87. Anyway, so I stopped getting the state ID cards and I would just use my passport. Huh? 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 Ah. You know how many few, yeah, few people in positions of business know what a passport is? Okay, I no. would I would venture to guess not enough. And anyway, to make a long, long story, just long. <laughs> what happened was I was in a situation where I had money to spend on and this friend of mine needed money for an electricity hookup. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And she had no, uh, she wasn't financially uh, qualified to even apply for this shit. So I told her I'd do it for her. Mm -hmm. And uh, and when we go to do it, they want identification. I give them my passport. And the girl at the counter says, "Uh, this isn't ID. I can't take this. And I yelled at her. I said, go get your supervisor. And the girl that I'm trying to do this favor for is grabbing me by the arm thinking I'm wrong. She doesn't know what's going on yet. So anyway, the girl goes, gets the supervisor, and the supervisor's coming back with my passport, reading it, and says, yes, sir, this is fine. And the girl was like, dropped her jaw dropped. She didn't know what she was dealing with, mm-hmm. a passport. Mm-hmm. And, and, okay. I get it. This I get is, it. Right, but you're the we we're the public, and those are the people paid money to not know shit and create trouble like that and make you get their supervisor and create disturbance instead of okay, sir, here da 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 da. And yet, as Penn Jillette says, do you really want government to be efficient if they can mess shit up so bad by being inefficient? Can you imagine how fucked the world would be if they were efficient? Yeah, well, this was in 90, I don't know, 99. It might have been 2000, um, answering Rob. And they wouldn't allow the uh, electric hat couldn't get turned on if you didn't have proof of something id whatever the fuck it was they needed something physical that they could look at that was their rules it wasn't like i could go get a a generator and just start making electricity and do it myself it's in fucking san fernando valley you know so yeah you're stuck you're fucked this grid thing they they want you they want you to bow to it and depend on it for everything you know, and never and never sway. Don't ever dare to step away from that fucking power supply. You will be hated. Oh, you'll be hated, and you could possibly be jailed anymore. There's places that are yeah, you know, yeah, living confiscating off the your property for your own good. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. What? That it doesn't that see? Then again, are these state laws? Because lately, I think that the people have been programmed to believe that the the federal government trumps the state government. And the way that it was originally explained to me when I was growing up in it was the state is your your mommy and your daddy and we deal with the Fed. You don't ever deal with the Fed. It's not your problem. Yeah. Oh, okay, Rob. I'm sorry. I just... I'm stoned, man. So I was reading the thing, saw your name, read something. I don't know. I just went crazy on it for a minute. That's why That's why we call this the dork table. Oh, Grimmy says it's the real fake fake. It's If you're talking about spewage, Wait, which is what story? I call it now. Oh, no. Uh, Kate says there's a rash of fake fake rash. news stories to cover oh, up yeah. the real fake news real stories. News. So it's spewage. It's all spewage. Right. All right. And how I explain that, and I have before, is I say this. They give you equal amounts of both true and not true. But they're all from the same source. You just can't prove that. But they couldn't be any other. This, It's a magic trick. And there's always a way to show you where the illusion was after the fact. But when it's happening, sleight of hand, you don't see it. You're looking at something that's completely not even, it's to distract you. And what's really going on, boy, when you find that out, you're going to go, hey, you could have put a little Vaseline on it first there. (laughs) Yeah, these fucking, these fucking government pricks, cops and shit, they, they're horrible. Oh, my, protect, serve and protect and shit. They're shooting at women and kids and beat up old guys what a fucking joke well and you know that whole that whole thing of of spewage and stuff if you truly want to control the narrative you have to control the narrative from all angles Mm. oh yeah speaking of control the narrative right during the summer there was violence in freetown that Uh really really upset me well my friend that's friend of circles is i've been friends with now anyway he came over today and explained to me 
no, I know somebody that was there and saw what happened. It's not what the news reported. I went, oh, so things are different, eh? Yeah. So just like at home, right? It's the same shit. Any big city does this, right? So what the, what the paper printed was was violence in, in Freetown, Christiania, when the truth of it was the guy that did the shooting ran out of Christiania and shot the guy outside of the Christiania border in the city. But the news was reported to make it seem like it was in Freetown, and they're so anti-gun in Freetown that they'd have a hard time explaining why the hell do you have a gun here if mm-hmm. you're so anti-gun? Because they're anti-coke, and, they're, and they've got their own enforcement. These people live together in an, uh, uh, their own community within a country. It's very strange. I've never seen anything like it before. Well, and it's kind of a live and let live thing, isn't it? Just have very mm-hmm. minimal rules and, and everybody yeah. just pretty much looks out for everybody else. Yeah, and there's businesses, there's signs, you know, the kids play here, don't smoke here, you know, things like that. Don't smoke the hash, you know, they don't want you to smoke the hash around the kids while they're playing. So you don't, you know, and they're they're posted. You can see them, and they're <laughs> like carved in a freaking board. But, cool. Yeah, but see, they don't have people wandering around in, in charge of anything, and there's lots of money exchanged every day. And they have restaurants and bars and different, uh, the different societies that click together are in different areas of Freetown. So basically they have a minimalist attitude when it comes to rules and regulations. You know, oh, it's yeah. just, it's basically do as you will, but remember. Mm-hmm. There's consequences for yeah. your actions. In and other and words, you're, you're be human. kind, rewind kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, you already you already know what's right and wrong. You don't need anybody telling you what's right and wrong. Yeah. That's a fantasy. No. And in, they deal with their own problems amongst their own. And if there's ever going to be any violence, any shootings, they're going to do it off the, they will go out and do it. They won't do it there. Yeah. So, yeah, I thought something was wrong with the whole thing when I heard it, but I couldn't prove it because I'm, you know, two hours on the train away. It used to be a nice hour walk and something. Oh, now I'm so far away. Oh, my God. I just saw something click up on my news feed. I got to check this shit out. <laughs> it's still, it was. <laughs> no, it, I got to tell you this. This is hilarious yeah, as hell. Right. Um, uh-huh. Cannabis is safer than Black Friday. Black Friday <laughs> had 15 uh-huh. injuries and one death. And uh-huh. the first ever legal cannabis sales, zero injuries and zero deaths. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. I don't wow. care who you are. Okay. Mm, I'm, I'm so, mm, I don't think so. Uh, oh, I just thought it was hilarious as hell. And yeah, I mean, it's that ironic, video, but yeah. I'm not immune. Well, you know, it's Nerd. a demon weed. Demon weed. The, the devil's the, lettuce. <laughs> I know. I'm still trying to picture that. The leaves aren't big enough to make a good salad. I don't think. Well, but. they're, well, no, <laughs> I don't know. It slips through the some, fork too easy. Some kind of. E.T., you know, an E.T. kind of a salad where it looked like fingers, you know, three-handed fingers. Oh, weird. Wow. I don't know. I'd get creative with it. Well, yeah. Race you you to the bottom of that, motherfucker. (laughs) Yeah. You know what was really funny? My mother, and I know I've told you several times, and I think I've even shared pictures with you in circles. My mother's yard Uh has flowers, flowers everywhere. Flowers. And um, on the west side of her house, actually in the grassy area between her driveway and the neighbor's driveway, she had this yeah. plant growing, and she wasn't really sure what it was. <laughs> oh, that was a weed. <laughs> yeah, that's why they call it weed. It's and, a weed. Fucker. Yeah, and she so she let it grow enough to where it was fairly decent height. I mean, it was a couple feet tall. <laughs> And my brother Rick went over there to uh, help her with something, and he saw that and he went, "Mom, yeah. yeah." Only he said it with his good German Russian accent, "Mom, 
Don't uh, you know what that is? <laughs> and mom uh, was like, no, it's a weed. I didn't know what kind of weed. I didn't. I wanted to wait and flower. make sure it didn't have a flower or something on it first before yeah. I pulled it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good thing. Apparently and the neighbor kids. Flowers. Yeah. yeah. That, that does grow some nice stuff. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Well, my brother that. pulled it and threw it back in the in the rubbish bin. <laughs> uh, oh, sure he did. Yeah, no, he did because he doesn't do that stuff. Wow. Oh, what a waste. Why do they always give the good the good projects to the undeserving? I know. Well, and see, Mother is like that. If she doesn't recognize a plant, she'll let it grow until it gets big enough to where she can, you know, either call someone from the extension agency or whatever, and they can come over and tell her what it is. Well, she had a couple of um, of plants grow this last summer that everyone was telling her they're weeds they're weeds you need to just pull them they're weeds and she and i were both looking at them and going but they're pretty <laughs> so she let them grow and they really were very pretty and they the leaves were very soft and velvety they they were kind of a cactus kind of thing that i'm sure um you know or in the succulent family i guess you would ah. say um, succulent family. yeah right. um yeah. but you know <laughs> very pretty plants they were a very very pale green leaves that were very had kind of a velvety feel to the leaves and very delicate dainty little white flowers almost like baby's breath they were really pretty so she decided well you know if they reseed themselves i guess i'll have more next year all righty mom there you go but that's what seeds are for that's right that's right and you know i i don't have a problem with letting stuff like that grow and i do that quite often in my yard as well if i don't recognize the plant i'll let it grow until it gets big enough for me to look it up on the internet or whatever and find out what it is and decide if i want to keep it or not so are you licensed to make a decision of that value no i'm not qualified okay. either damn it oh. i didn't take any specialized training or any of that other fun shit i just wow i looked but it up on the internet you can produce a note signed by your mother hey there you go well that's what i'll have to do there you go hey what? my mommy says it's okay moms. yeah that's yeah and the she's 85 years arrested. old so fuck you <laughs> Yeah, the next time I get arrested, I'm going to say, but hey, my mom said I could do this. That yeah. makes it okay. That'll yeah. change everything. It does. Well, I hope it's a misdemeanor. <laughs> ah. I missed her, what? but I didn't mean to. She's a meaner one than most. Uh, uh, <laughs> I know. That was I don't a joke that I... fell on its face. Oh. No. Oh, well. I don't know. I I was telling jokes last week, so yeah. I will refrain from yoke, yoke telling today. You know, I did tell your Thor joke last week at bowling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is that good? It's, and it's what was out of nowhere. <laughs> I know, and it was it was just so hilarious cuz that was like <laughs> I think that was after the first bowling game actually. When I told yeah. that one and, you know, <laughs> so then it got to where if we would throw a really shitty ball, we would come walking back really weird. Go, oh. I'm so Thor. <laughs> so we had fun with it for the rest of the night. Well, that was the point. You yep. know, see, there's the idea, right? And, and I think that's why I like to do the radio with you is no matter how we don't agree on what we're talking about, it's never personal. That it's weird. I've never got along with. I don't get along with Stark that good. When we disagree about something, oh boy, then you got that Jew Mexican versus the Danes going on. Oh, it's beautiful. It's like a, a test of wills, you know. Yeah, but see, Two, you guys, you guys yeah. live together. Yeah. I yeah, don't have to put up with your ass. If I don't like what you say, I can just say, oh, I've got to go do something, and I shut you off. <laughs> yeah, but you're nicer than that. You usually tell me you have to go do some weeding. Yeah. Feed the dog. Yeah. I have to feed the cat. Yeah. Because I need to go yeah. rake some leaves, even if I have to climb oh, yeah, a tree. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Mary, it's December. It's a, it, yeah, I should have did it last month and I forgot. <laughs> Jeez. You're not painting the barn there, Bronco. Anyway. <laughs> no, I wouldn't paint the barn anyway. Now, I do need to go In out December? and paint the cave. But The cave? Yes. Yeah. Ah, that's, that's what I've decided cave. to start calling it. You know, the grandkids like that name, too. So we're that's the cave. That's where we go out and we play in the cave. Okay, so that's your playroom. That's the playhouse, yep, with You're the wood-burning that... stove and where all the puzzles are and all that fun stuff. Yep. I was waiting for you to tell me that you're really Batman and all this was a joke. <laughs> I do hang upside down from time to time <laughs> just because I want to get lightheaded, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> no, that's that's the vodka. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it just I just think I'm hanging upside down. Ah. It, it's, a, it's a strange phenomenon, but... I find people more agreeable with a bottle of vodka than without one. To a point. You know, it, like if it wasn't for vodka, you would never get guys drunk enough to actually shove a rocket up their butt and light it on fire like on the YouTube videos. Hold my that's, beer, watch this. That, yeah, that's drunk. That's out, it's out of your fucking mind drunk. And there you go. Freedom. Uh-huh. How did that come out to be freedom? I don't get it. See, and that's Doing one of those... Doing something stupid under the influence of alcohol makes you cool. And I want to be cool, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, you know, a lot of people, they don't understand that with freedom comes an awful lot of responsibility. Because, yeah, if you want to be free to say whatever you want to say, free to do whatever you want to do, that is fine. But you got to realize for every action there is an equal and opposite, if not more than equal, uh, opposite reaction. And so when you are free to spout whatever you wish to spout, which I do an awful lot of spouting, then mm -hmm. I'm also free to deal with the repercussions, ramifications, or rewards of yeah. whatever I just spouted. And yeah. calling foul because mm -hmm. I said something that someone agreed with and called me on the carpet for, and then me going, well, that's just not fair. Excuse me. Yes, it is. Yeah. It is very fair. I opened my mouth, which means I opened the door. I cannot, yeah. you know, it's what's not fair is slamming the door and saying, no, you don't have a right to because I'm free to say what I want to say. Bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> you're free to say whatever yeah. you want to say, but you're also free to deal with the ramifications of whatever you just said. So does this involve like shit like pride and ego or uh, is this yeah. facts and not fiction? Well, some of it, I think, is pride, um, you know, or the mm. belief that, you know, my freedom means that I'm free to do whatever I want to. And, and that means that if I don't want to, I don't have to deal with repercussions. Well, that's just not the way the world works. That is mm. one of those constants. That is like a natural law kind of thing. Every mm. time there is an action, there is a reaction. Every mm. time. It well, may not right. happen immediately, but there ah, will be one. The do yes, the delayed reaction. Yes. All things are not on the same wavelength. That's true. Some things on this planet move slower than others. And there's days when I move slower than others. And, well, that was the point. That's the result of it. But on, maybe on a molecular level, there's a whole other way to look at life. You know, on a, and, on a molecular level, I am a busy woman right now because I may just be sitting here with a cat on my lap and talking yeah, to you, but on, the, but yeah, on an atomic stuff. scale, and little buggers are buzzing everywhere, and shit, now I'm tired. All right. Now, where, <laughs> okay. But where did the, in, the information to make that decision, what is the source of it? The That's source of, where, of your knowledge, of atoms and things bouncing off each other inside your body and all that other shit we think we know about i don't because know it just work... comes to me it pops into my head uh, okay. and i let it fall out my pie hole and i'm saying a lot of people are conditioned to believe things that aren't even proven fact 
they're just theory. And as a group, group conscience says you're going to believe this or you're a weirdo. And there's lots of things that come, you know, that come into it. Like they figured out a way to tax us for breathing air. They call it climate control, climate change. Uh huh. They call it. Yeah. See, all that shit's all really about, and they disguise it under we're polluting and all this other horse shit. And they even show you pictures of pollutants and look at what it's done. And then they put mercury in your inoculation to balance the scale when they're all done cleaning up everything. So it's a loser from, you, know, you can't win. Well, you can't can... win, and yet you can. I mean, it just depends on your personal way of looking at it, I guess. Well, if the grip gets any tighter on the American dream, uh, how are you people going to breathe? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, if, according to the Internet, I mean, you know, it's George Soros is ruining your life. And uh, what yeah, else? Is yeah, it's on the there's, Internet. There's OK. And on Thanksgiving, the week of Thanksgiving time. A group of people gather to stop a construction pipeline going through a tribal place, blah, blah, blah. And what ends up happening? Military action against peaceful protesters at, at a holiday time in, in your, your life. Yeah. And I'm thinking, wow, I was kind of like, wait, it was hard to read. People were going, oh, I'm so stuffed full of turkey. And I'd, oh, wow. Some people were just protesting this thing. So it seems like... The Indians and the pilgrims didn't get along as well as people want to make the make believe they did. Because they're still fighting now. So what did I miss a meeting again, Mary? What, where am I falling down? Uh, I think you are falling down. And you know what? That uh -huh. reminds me of something that I read the other day. A friend of oh. mine shared. Um, <laughs> and it's something about how the, the first Thanksgiving... And uh, basically the first Thanksgiving feast, whatever, was because a, uh, and I, I hate using Native American, because really if you're born here, you're a Native American. Don't give me that shit. Mm -hmm. And indigenous people, okay, I was yeah. born here, mm -hmm. therefore I am in, indigenous. The <sighs> labels kind of make me yeah. crazy sometimes, but... Okay, I'm crazy already, but the labels just add to it. In Call them case, them fuckers over there. Yeah, them fuckers Piss over off there. there everybody. You go. Yeah, yeah, everybody yeah. will hate you. Them, them, their sons of bitches over there. Um, <laughs> in any case, I wonder if I can find it. Oh, you. Were oh, here it is. Here it is. Ah, um, did it. I'll just, I'll just read this to you real fast. You do that. Most That's people you... know the basic story of the first Thanksgiving. The pilgrims arrived at Plymouth Rock, yada, yada, yada. The Native Americans helped them grow food, and they all gathered together in a feast of Thanksgiving. But what most tellings of the story leave out is the crucial role played by Squanto, the English-speaking Catholic Native American hero. Why was there an English-speaking Catholic Native American near Plymouth when the pilgrims landed? Well, I, and I don't know if it... But I'm going to just read what she wrote here. The amazing story. It started in the early 17th century. Squanto's tribe came in contact with some of the earliest English colonists in the Americas. He was captured and taught English so he could serve as an interpreter. But in 1614, he was being transported by John Smith of Pocahontas fame, and one of Smith's lieutenants, Thomas Hunt, kidnapped him. Hunt took Squanto to Spain to sell him as a slave. Boy, doesn't that make you proud. But some Franciscan friars saw what was happening and saved Squanto. Franciscans taught Squanto the Catholic faith, and he was apparently baptized. A free man, Squanto wanted to return home, so when he went to London to try to get a place on board a ship going back to the Massachusetts colony. In the meantime, he worked as a shipbuilder and greatly improved his English. In 1619, Squanto was finally able to return home on a ship led by 
John Smith. Isn't it funny how things keep repeating sometimes? Tragically, upon arrival, he discovered that most of the tribe, or most of his tribe, had died of a plague the year before. That's the gift that kept on giving. It was almost as though God had prepared him perfectly for what happened next. Just a year later, in 1620, the pilgrims arrived. They were English Calvinists who were seeking to build a new religious community apart from the Church of England. Little did they know that they would end up being saved by a Catholic. The pilgrims had little food and were unprepared for survival in the Americas. Squanto, who spoke great English and had a lot of experience with English culture, reached out to help teach them how to grow food in the new landscape, and it must have seemed like a miracle to the pilgrims. He befriended the pilgrims and became an important part in their community. At one point, Squanto was ki um, kidnapped by another tribe, and a team of pilgrims saved him. Unfortunately, less than two years after the landing of the pilgrims, Squanto became sick and died suddenly. Governor William Bradford, one of the pilgrim leaders, wrote this about him. Here Squanto fell, ill of Indian fever, bleeding much at the nose, which the Indians take as a symptom of death, and within a few days he died. He begged the governor to pray for him, that he might go to the Englishman's God in heaven, and bequeath several of his things to his English friends as remembrances. So, you know, that, when I read that, I thought, wow, and how many people actually know, because, I mean, I, I didn't yeah. know the individual's yeah. name, but I knew the basic gist of the story, that it wasn't what we were taught in school, that, you know, oh, mm. they all got together, and it was such a happy time, and yada, yada, yada. No, the pilgrims were going to starve to death if it wasn't for those that were here beforehand they would have starved to death and history would be completely different but you know there's that great big two letter word again if mm. <gasps> damn I was being emotional oh well do you need a Kleenex to wipe a tear from your eye or whatever yeah okay well, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> wow. The first time in history, two people talked to each other on radio and weren't talking to each other. <laughs> I know. Isn't that, that weird? What the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> no. Tear from my eye. Help. <laughs> well, You're welcome. Okay. Now, let, let's assume... For, for your benefit, and besides, uh -huh. I liked your story better than the one I was told at school. Yeah, let's assume that is the truth. But on the other hand, then that opens the door for choice. Is there really a choice? Or is there only, do you have the ability to tell which story is bullshit and which one is not bullshit? How, how hard should it be? And see, that's where I think personal interpretation comes into play. You know, whatever uh, resonates with harmony. someone else, you know? People, people don't feast in fucking harmony. And they prove it every Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That is so, yeah. Because there's always the going to be someone chest. fighting over the damn turkey leg. So, yeah. Table manners 101. Yeah. Well, I do remember growing up in a large family that during the Thanksgiving feast, you had to be yeah. very quick about grabbing whatever was in oh. the middle of the table. Because if you didn't, uh, you would get forked. And I'm saying uh, F-O-R-K-E-D. Bunch of cannibals. Yeah. Yeah. Very uncivilized. Yeah, well, you know, we were kids. And we were hungry. Yeah. Yeah, well, I... Okay. And there was food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't... See, I, I was such a little kid, too. Is I was never all that hungry and all that needy for anything. 
always seemed to get my fair share no matter what it was because to me the world was plenty. See, and to me, the only times I really, 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 and still to this day, the only times I really get starving Marvin is like this time of the year. You know, around uh, Thanksgiving and around Christmas, I just, and there are all, certain all, aromas, you know, like pumpkin yeah. pie baking or a turkey baking. All the years of programming, or, sure. Yeah, but you know, yeah, your those, senses are appealed to. Sure. Yeah, well, you know, and and people don't realize just how much the sense of smell really does affect their behavior. And Should wow, have some, bake some bread, and oh. the smell of bake bake bread inside the the average domicile is like it's like a religious experience. Yeah, it is. It is. Or you know, the smell of cookies baking in the oven, or See, actually yes. anything baking in the oven for me, pretty much is like. Yeah. Oh, right. I'm in heaven. <laughs> and somehow, all right, and somehow I believe that these particular uh, interests that we have in food through sense of smell, I think they're uh, enhanced by advertising and, and societies, the way that it deals with us, pushes us towards certain kinds of behavior prone to do certain things a certain way. Yeah. And, and that's how they make money off us. So we're like a... We're like a chart. We're not even human. Well, not in their eyes, no. Uh, well, well, then how can people vote and, and, and give their consent to this machine that's so venomous and poisonous? Because they, they don't realize they're in a machine. And, you know, that's one of those things that I, I had a discussion years and years ago with someone about you know they were saying how can people live like that how can they do those things don't they know any better and i just looked at them and said okay how can you do what you do that's what you grew up in that is normal for you right. when i grew you up i didn't know you know yeah. it's that whole i didn't know i was poor because i thought the way we lived was the way everyone lived everybody does right that's what everybody thinks till a certain age yeah. And at some and it's different with different folk. And maybe some people never grow beyond that. I don't know. But some of the texts that I read in chat rooms is I I'm just amazed. Yeah. It is kind of amazing amaze. when you when yeah, you look you at think, that. How could somebody spend all that time, you know, learning to read and write? And then not understand two fucking words that they read. It just boggles my mind. And there will usually be people that claim to have some, some you know, education. And they're knowledgeable and done their research. But, you know, if the car breaks down, they wouldn't know how to change a tire. It's because... As an example. You know, yeah. it's not... Ch but something would go wrong beyond their ability. And then all of a sudden, their greatness has got no value. And they don't seem to understand that. You're only important in life when you're needed, not when you want other people to need you. That doesn't work. If you're forcing it, uh, it's a repellent. It blows up in your face. Yeah. Okay, while so, you were talking, uh, I'm I'm looking at the chat scroll are, by. Are, are you still wearing that their flannel shirt? There, yes, smiling? I am. I'm still wearing flannel. I'm the happiest guy on Skype. In any case, I'd, I'm reading the chat, and Grimmy puts something okay. on there, and, and I'm like, what? says, how bizarre can you get the first Monday after the second Wednesday in December? Hmm. Wow. Is it like a contest? I don't know if I can actually wrap my head around that. That would seem to me to be a freaker's ball question, not necessarily a dork table question. But I have yet, ruled. <laughs> you have ruled, and yet I think that's a rather dorky know. statement, if there ever is one. The first Monday <laughs> after the second yeah. Wednesday. And, uh, yeah. I'm still trying to wrap my little brain cells around that. Well, it's a word game. Yeah, see, that's, that's how I look at this whole thing, is we just deal in communication. Very little of life is physical. Most of it's just thinking and talking and hearing. And the rest of it, you just make it all up in your head. Yep. And I don't know. I've never been to South South America. So 
uh, my version of what the the forest in in Argentina looks like might be different than yours, and you might not have seen it either. But you know, it's just what we think. Why does it always have to be? Okay, it's like that uh, victims and uh, winners. You you get if you can't have a winner, you then what's the fuck fucking point of picking on the victim? Yeah, or the winners and losers thing. If yeah, how right. do you know but, you're a winner if you don't have a loser? So therefore, you have to have yeah. a loser, and someone needs to be designated with that title in order for you to claim your title yeah. of winner. Okay, are you the winner or am I today? Who's, um, you want to choose? Let's let's leave it to chance. Who's having a chicken dinner? Because that's the winner. Winner, winner, <laughs> chicken dinner. I bought chicken yesterday. <laughs> I think it's me. Oh, see how you are. Damn it. No fair. No fair. Yeah, well, I, I'm not real big on food, especially meat. You know, meat's just, I don't know. It's a touchy subject because I've had to murder animals to eat meat. And yeah, memory being what it is, you, you fluctuate. You know? Yeah. And there was a time it was like, eh, it was what I did. And now I kind of think, wow, I'm pretty mean when you think about it, what it took to do it. Because I was a city boy, so you know, say hey, we need somebody to kill the rabbits. I'll do it. Okay. Oh. And then I went and did it. And went. Oh man, that's not as fun as I thought it might be. But after a while, then it wasn't. It you. I hit some kind of weird plateau and got scared of thinking. Wow, what if I wanted to try this on a human to see what would happen? And I went. Nah, that's this is too fucked up for me. I don't want to touch this. And then I stepped away. It was like 18, 19 years old, but we was hungry and rabbits was on the, um, on the menu and somebody had to go do it. So we did it. Oh, thank you, Gary L. I didn't know that. Winners and losers what? are an extension of the, is that Hegelian dialect? Hegel? I'm not sure. I hey baby. What's up? Oh, you're leaving? Uh, hey man. All right. Catch up with you next oh. time. Yeah, you talk to your friend. And hey, what's up, dude? And Kate right, said we'll something about time. classy trolls. Hey. But classy trolls. Yeah, what's a classy troll? Is that one that, oh, that wears some oh. of that shiny oh. green jade fake jade shit that I now need to have some? I think the troll thing is just overrated, like violence. You know, a lot of times I think. I mean, there are some people that go out of their way to be obnoxious twits. I I get that. I've done that a time or two, um, which is uh, how I recognize it, because I know what I was like when I did that. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, a lot of times, most trolls, I just look at them and go, you're mm. one funny fucker, you know that? Oh. So, you know, I just so develop a sense of humor about it, because it's like, Okay, you know you don't troll nearly as well as you think you do. Or so maybe disagreeing, just... disagreeing with a popular mindset is is trolling now. That's what that is. Apparently. Wow. Well, you know how pissed off I am that it took most of the fucking Americans this long to realize pot's nothing to be afraid of, and just a few that have so far is better than none. But you're letting the government ruin it. Yeah. To to get to smoke it, people have, um, I call it sold out. They compromise their integrity to be able to, to not break the law instead of demanding, make it a decriminalized weed, you fucking monkeys. Quit lying to people. But no, what do we got? Yeah, but we you got know. a bunch of We got a bunch of voters that settle for fucking second best and let the government control a weed. It's insane. Yeah. And rather than just do it yourself and no, these people are going to go to their little shops and pay their taxes and fuel the beast. And in the long run, it does you more harm than good. You're better off growing a couple plants in a fucking house. Yeah. If, if it's legal, why go through, why bother with this fucking illegal money system and these these pricks in power it's insane and you know i think a lot of kids the reason why they 
they go that direction is because it's illegal. You know, it's the allure of being naughty. I know when uh, I was a kid, that's that was why I tried it because it was like, ooh, this is illegal. I'm gonna well, try see, it. See, I okay, and I think that's just another social mindset stuff down your throat, so you'll believe it to cover human curiosity. It's different levels and different people. Yeah. But I, you know, I freely admit that when I was younger, that that was why, because it, or a good share of why, I went, right. oh, really? That's illegal, mm -hmm. and it does what? Mm -hmm. Cool, I'll try it. <laughs> you know, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm kind of a curious individual anyway. See, so there's but, right. a lot of things that I will try once. That. And once I one. realize I've tried it and I don't like it, I don't go there again. Uh, and let me ask you a question. Do you know how arrogant it sounds to me to say, I'm only going to try it once? How do you know that? How do you know you're going to survive the attempt at trying? I mean, we're, how we've been trained to think and speak. It, it goes against my nature. Some, the way I do it sometimes it goes against this nature I have mm -hmm. and something about me tells me I'm doing something fucking wrong and I know it, but I can't quite understand in my own mind what mistake am I making because I'm the one that's making it. And until I get to the answer, it's not your problem. It's mine. Yeah. And most of the time I don't give two fucks about what somebody else says anyway. So I don't deal with it very often. You know, once in a blue moon. Well, I don't know that well, I'll ever try anything just once until I try it the first time. And if I survive the first endeavor and I liked it, then I'll probably try uh, it again. If I don't survive I the first endeavor, then, well, right, I right. guess I don't have to worry about it anymore. I was picking on the words more than the concept. Yeah. It, oh, I understand an that. It's way to say what it, yeah, there's a better way to say that so it 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 flows well i i got turned on to this through larry right i've been listening to the shows we did back and then he went over to ocelli and he talked about the magic thing again uh-huh and there i'm very convinced there is something in the formulation of the words that we choose to use both oral and and written and when you read them your interpreting is done through a process that really adjust it, it it involves your emotional feelings mm -hmm. by what you read or what you hear mm -hmm. at a level but it's at a level that oh you might go well i don't like that or hey fuck you or hey that sounds good but there's more to it than just that <laughs> ah that that's the top of the cookie because when you, you start digging deeper into it you find out there's so much more of you going on at the time than you know, like your health. Yeah. Well, you're the one that... I believe you... Uh, you believe that the mind is superior to the physical. Yes. And I also believe that they can be in tune with each other, which makes them work better together. Yes. Because there's, it's not the design that's flawed. It's the way that we live. It's, yeah, called, it's how well, we use the tool we are given. Right. And the people that manipulate the fuel and the energy we use are killing us. And they've got just a little bit less than half of the population still convinced they know what they're doing. So give it a few more years and this shit will run its course and die. Or we will as a species. Because it can't go any further. It's all negative, right? War overthrows and uh, making bombs and all that horse shit, you know, nuclear war, crap like that. Well, if it's going to go to that, it's going to go to that. And there's nothing you can do to stop that from happening as a person. One person isn't going to do fucking anything. But as a collective, that's another story. Yes. So we'll never be collected like that because we have too many things jam between each of us to keep us separate from ever really unifying and stopping it because well what would we do the challenge would be fucking marvelous 
if they just stop this whole fucking thing and say, we're going to start over again, you'd find people coming together in quickly and better and best would be the wow, best and better wouldn't even exist anymore. We just do the, what was best for everybody, but we can't get to that point because we have politicians creating trouble for us to overcome and ay, 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 ay. Yeah. There you go. I've read a few of the guys on the internet here on the RLM site. They they might not hold the same value to the letter that I hold, but the concept of being responsible for your own fucking ass, if that insults you or if you're afraid of society, then eh, I ain't got time for that. That's nonsense. Oh, it's amusing. Maybe I shouldn't say I don't have time for it. Because I, I use it to entertain myself between um, games when I'm playing on the internet. Uh-huh. I'll get in there and banner a little bit with somebody I disagree with. And I shouldn't, but I do it. And you know what? Mm. Sometimes when I banter well, with someone that it, I it, disagree no with, I, I wind up changing a little bit. I'm still going to still gonna look like a... Do what? Yeah. So, you know what? Well, I'm still going to come out verbally looking in a certain light. Yeah. You know, did that? Yeah. No. Oh, I understand. Oh, we're done, baby. Yeah. It's over. Yeah, hey, we are at the end of it. Light. So. Party's over. But still, you know, there's this inner, there, but there's an inner thing I know right from wrong. Uh-huh. Yeah. At some levels. Yeah. Well, I think and everybody does. I think at does. some levels I enjoy wrong more than I should. There you go. And see, Bye-bye. that is a human nature thing. Do you? So, okay. I mean, I would like to not be the only one responsible. Yeah, the flight of fight, yeah. Yeah, but you know what? You're responsible Bye-bye. for you, so, and I'm responsible for me. In any case, <laughs> y'all been listening to the dork table or haven't been listening yeah. to the dork table? If you haven't and, been listening, yeah. then you're not going to hear go. this little blurb that I'm going to put out right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, this has been Grammy Dork or Graham Dork or whatever the hell name I use this. Yeah, Graham Dork. This you time. hit a button, too. I did? Oh, I didn't know I Great hit a button. <laughs> In any case, um, thanks for listening into the Dork Table and for playing along with us today. The f- un- uh, bleh, 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 that, too. For my whoop, whoop. co-host, Flash Dork, and myself, Graham Dork. Um, please stick around because Kira will be on later on with the bridge and then Bo Diddy will be Uh, on after that or this evening with some bodacious.